Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create dotted circles in Illustrator. Before we start with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you can create these sort of dotted circles. I've heard people call them dotted tunnels, but I'm going to show you two methods of doing them. I'm going to show you this method and this method here. And they're both a little bit different and obviously the results that you get in applying these different methods are quite different. So you may prefer one of these dotted tunnels to the other. I'm going to show you how you can create both. To start this project, I've just created a brand new document. Mine's a thousand points by a thousand points, but yours can be any size at all. The circles that we're creating are not fixed in size, so you can just create something that looks approximately the same sort of relative size as I have created. I'm going to turn off the stroke here and I'm going to select a fill for the very first of my circles. And we're going to create the one that grew out quite quickly. I'm going to start with an ellipse, so I'm going to target the ellipse tool and I'm going to hold the shift key as I draw a very, very small circle. So I want it to be small relative to my canvas. With this circle selected, I'm now going to rotate it around. So I'm going to choose Effect and then Distort and Transform and Transform. I want to see my preview because I want to see what's happening as I do it. And I want to see a number of copies. I'm going to start with eight because we're going to alter that in a minute as we work. I'm also going to select an angle. Now the bigger the angle that I select, the quicker this circle is going to be created. So I'm just going to type 30 and we're going to see in a minute as we move this shape exactly how many we need and how sharp this angle is going to be. We are going to select a move ratio. So I'm actually going to move this a few points. So as you can see, I'm starting to move it. And as I move it horizontally, it's starting to create this circle. And the only thing that's stopping it going all the way around is that I don't have enough copies. So I can just increase the number of copies here until I get all the way around the circle. For a 30 degree angle, I need 11 copies. That's 12 dots in total. If I was to make this, for example, 45 degrees, I wouldn't need so many copies because I don't need as many to get all the way around the circle. I need seven copies to make eight dots in total. And this number of dots in the center is going to control how many dots you have on the very edge of your circle. So you'll probably want a fairly generous number. I think 30 and 11 copies is a good starting point. So I'm going to select that for mine and click OK. So this is the middle of my circle. This is always going to be the very smallest of my circles. I'm going to select this shape and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to choose Edit, Copy, and then Edit, Paste in Place, because I want that to be my second shape. But I'm also going to have to expand it so I can work with it. So I'm going to go just show you my Layers palette so that we can see this as we work. Just going to increase the size of my layers here. And we're with this second version. So first of all, I'm going to change its color. So let's just go and pick an orange color for it. And then let's expand it with Object Expand Appearance. So we create all these dots. And then I'm going to drag outwards. And I'm going to drag outwards and hold the Shift and Alt keys as I do this because that's going to constrain this second set of dots to exactly the same center location as the middle set of dots. And it's also going to make sure that I constrain this to a perfect square as I drag it so my circles aren't going to distort the in shape. Once I'm ready, I'm just going to let go of the mouse button and then let go of the Alt and Shift keys. And here's the first of our circles. I can reselect this inner shape and let's duplicate it again. Edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And again, I'm going to change its color. And this time, let's go for a sort of pink color. Again, I'm going to expand it, object, expand appearance. 
and this is the group that we're working with here and again I'm just going to hold shift and alt as I drag out just looking to place this second shape around the first and I'm going to go back and select this once more edit copy edit paste in place change the color of it so I'm going to make my outer piece this sort of blue color I'm going to expand its appearance and then I'm going to shift alt drag to create the outer shape now this is my finished circle of dots so I'm going to grab all of these pieces shift click on the selector here so I've got every single one of these selected and I'm going to choose object group and that's going to group these so that they travel together it's also going to allow me to alt drag away a duplicate of this set of circles so I can select this duplicate and I can size this down holding shift and alt I can make it a whole lot smaller than it was so it's easy to resize this shape and in a minute I'm going to show you how to recolor it as well now the second version of these circles is very different just going to put these on a new layer so that we can work on this layer I'm just going to hide this one for the moment so we're working on a brand new layer I'm going to create a circle using the ellipse tool and this is going to be the inner part of my circle so this is as big as the inner part of my dotted circle is going to be I'm going to flip these around so that this time the blue is the stroke and not the fill and I'm going to increase the stroke to something like for me for this particular shape something like about 10 points that's the sort of ratio of stroke to circle size that I want I'm going to go into the appearance panel and we can get to that by choosing window appearance this is the stroke I'm working on so I'm going to open up this stroke panel I'm going to select a rounded cap here and I'm going to select dashed line and I'm going to set my dash at zero and my gap is going to be the distance between these dots and at the moment you can see my gap is about 35 and it's really really big so I'm going to start decreasing that and I do that by just clicking on this value here and use the down pointing arrow because it allows me to eyeball this as I create it so this is my inner set of dots and I just need to create those to as many dots as I want for this shape and when I'm finished I'm just going to click away from it now this is the inner circle so we're going to create the next circle and we do that by duplicating this stroke so with this stroke selected in the appearance panel I'm going to just drag and drop it onto this new icon and what that does is duplicate the stroke layer so let's go and choose a different copy color so I'm going to make pink dots this time now you can see that my pink dots are right over the top of my blue dots well all I need to do is to distort this particular stroke and make it bigger so with this pink stroke layer selected well it's not actually a layer but this pink stroke appearance selected I'm going to choose effect distort and transform transform and all I want to do is to scale this a bit bigger I'm thinking probably 125 is a good start but let's preview it so we can see it's not quite big enough so let's take it out to 135 now at this point you can see that my dots are getting bigger and you can make a choice here as to whether the dots get bigger or not if you want the dots to get bigger just select scale stroke and effects if you don't want the dots to get bigger don't select that option if you don't select this option you'll find that you can actually get these a lot tighter so we could perhaps take this back to 130 or even smaller because we don't need to allow so much room because the dots aren't changing size so again this is your choice to make do you want to have dots that get bigger or do you not I'm not going to scale my strokes so I'm just going to leave these as a series of dotted circles where all the dots are exactly the same size I'm just going to click OK now this is my pink layer I just want to duplicate it again so I'm going to drag it 
drag this appearance down onto this Add New icon to create a different version. I'm going to recolor this, so this time I'm going to make them, well let's make them a green color. Let's go and get this green. And again I need to make them a bigger size, but you'll see here I've already got the transform that I used when I made the pink ones. So I can double click this to reopen this dialog, turn the preview on, and this time just increase this transform value. I'm going to try 175. Well that's way too big. Let's take it back to 165. You need to eyeball this and just test values to see whether they're the values that you want. If we were in this circle to get it bigger every time so that our dots became bigger, we would of course be making sure that Scale Strokes and Effects is selected. But we didn't want to. We wanted this to have the exact same size dots all the way through. So I'm just going to select those values and click OK. I am however just a little bit concerned here, I want to show you here. Can you see that this pink dot is a bit fat? It's actually two dots jammed together. So I can come in here and try and see if either of these options is going to solve the problem and if they're not going to solve the problem I can come in and just decrease the gap width or increase the gap width to try and get a better result here. So I'm going to do the same for this stroke here because I'm getting a slightly too large dot. Well I think I'm going to have to increase this a little bit. And then I would go back and do this again. So I'm going to take my green line and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to choose a different color. So I'm going to go for an orange this time. And it's appeared right over the top of the green because we haven't yet sized it. I'm going to double click its transform. I'm going to turn preview on and I'm going to go for a higher value, probably around 190 to push this orange set of dots outside the green ones. Well 190 isn't enough, so let's take this to 200. And again I've got a slight problem here, these are not very even, but I can solve that. I'm just going to click OK to get out of this dialog, go back into the stroke dialog, test to see if either of these is going to solve my problem. And I think one of them just did. I think selecting this option here has just given me a better spacing of the dots around the circle. So now that I've created this shape, let's just control zero to go back out so that we can see the shape relative to our artboard. This shape is just a single path. It's all created from this single set of dots and it's just a whole lot of appearances applied to it. So if we want to make a duplicate, I'm just going to click on this and alt drag a duplicate of it away. And again this one can be resized, so I'm going to select it and this time to resize it I'm going to choose Object Transform Scale because I need to determine whether I'm going to scale the strokes and effects as well as the shape itself. And I do need to do that to actually have it look right. I'm going to need to scale the strokes at the same time. If I turn that off, I'm going to get lots of small dots. Now if that's what you want, that's fine, but I want mine to be scaled appropriately. So I'm going to scale the strokes and effects. And I've now got one that's 150% of the original size. And again I can go and drag a second one away and let's make this much smaller, Object Transform Scale. Again ensuring that we're scaling strokes and effects, let's take this down to 50% of the original size and click OK. And then let's bring back these other dots that we created, these dotted tunnels or dotted circles. And I'm going to show you now how you can recolor these very easily using a live color effect in Illustrator. Let's start our recoloring with this shape. So I'm just going to select the shape and then I'm going to bring in the swatches panel. And you can get to that by choosing Windows Swatches. With the shape selected, you're going to click here on this new color group icon. You're going to choose Selected Artwork, deselect either of these checkboxes if any of them are selected and just click OK. And what you've done then is created a color group that is the colors in this particular shape. 
So now we're going to click here, Edit or Apply Color Group. And this opens up this dialog that allows us to work with the colors in this artwork. One of the things we can do is to randomly change these colors. So all we're doing is taking the exact same set of colors, but we're mapping it on to different areas of this shape. So you can get your single color scheme. We could be working with just a single color scheme of four colors, but we can get different sorts of dots different arrangements of these dots just by reassigning these colors. So instead of blue being the outermost set of dots, it's been mapped into the innermost set of dots. So we're just changing the order of the colors in the shape. So that's one alternative for recoloring. I've just selected OK and I am going to save the changes to this swatch color group. So I'm going to use that as one method of changing the colors in this shape. And it looks like I've just managed at the same time to add a stroke color, which I didn't want to add. So I'm just going to turn off the stroke color. Let's have a look at this shape and let's have a look and see a different way of changing the colors in this shape. So I've got the shape selected. Again, I'm going to create a new color group and exactly the same settings as I used before. And again, I'm going to click here to edit or apply color group. But instead of just rotating these colors, this time I'm going to click on edit because what that allows me to do is to totally change the colors I'm using. I can just drag around to get another set of colors. The relationship between the colors is staying stable because the arrangement of these dots is exactly the same. We're actually creating similar relationship between the colors, but we're choosing different colors. I can drag in here so I can take one of these colors that is highly saturated and make it a lot less saturated. You can see this color here is the one that's being affected. You can make it more saturated or less saturated. Now that's probably particularly important when we get round into the blues here because this saturation of this blue is really quite high relative to the rest of the shape. But if we wanted to, we could just select a color scheme like this. So once you've created a color scheme here, you can just click OK and then Yes to save the changes. Let's make one more change. Let's select this one and go through the same process all over again. Again, I'm going into Edit this time, but instead of saving the relationship between these colors, I'm going to break it this time. And that allows me to drag any one of these dots into a different color. So I can change the colors in my shape by just selecting a different color. And again, this time we've got a different relationship between the colors because changing one of these colors doesn't affect any of the other colors. So we can choose the color scheme that we want to use here. And when I'm happy with it, I'm just going to click OK and then Yes. So you've seen two different ways of creating these dotted circles. You have a couple of choices here and which you choose depends on really what you want your outcome to be. And you've also seen how you can create different color combinations here using the recolor options in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.